Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another agent spotlight. And I'll tell you right now, if you are looking for an agent in South Florida that understands what it means to really find your home, to find not a house, but a place that you can call home, uh, you're going to enjoy today's interview. We got Lorena Hernandez with us. And uh, also make sure you stay on till the end because we're going to, as always, ask Lorena why she chose to work with MVP Realty. But let's first dig into Lorena's business. Um, I'm super excited to have you on board. We've talked a few times offline and you were just laying out this amazing, beautiful way of how you place someone in a home. And I mean, I was about to sell my house and move to South Florida and hire you just based off that. It was wonderful. And I was hoping maybe you could share that with our viewers. So let's back up a little bit. <laughs> let's say I'm someone who comes to Lorena and says, Lorena, we are moving. Now, let's take this move as a move where we're not saying I'm moving two miles, right? We've moved those families. We, As realtors, we've all helped those families where they just want to move into the next community over. Right. But let's say we're a family where we're moving from another state, or even let's say we're moving from Central Florida or Northern Florida to South Florida. What would that process look like for you? So I always, I like to call it a discovery call um, because I really can't help you unless I understand you. And in order to understand you, I have to understand what life is like for you where you're at and what life is about to become for you where you're going. So whether you're downsizing or upsizing or you're moving across town because you have to get closer to family members or because of a new job career or anything, all of the above, I have to really understand the why behind it. So if I don't understand the why, I can't help with the pain or pleasure aspect of actually relocating you to a place that you need to be that's going to be conducive for the lifestyle that you want to have within that price range. So it's a discovery call. Sometimes they're 15 minutes, sometimes they're two hours. But honestly, I'd rather have a two, three hour conversation with you the first time to really understand and get to know you, your family, the dynamics of everything going on so that I can really place you where you're going to be happy because I don't want you to go back and be like, she put me in the worst place ever. Like, no, we're going to have conversations and we're going to figure out what lifestyle is going to be the lifestyle that's going to make you happy. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And, you know, you're really, I would call you the lifestyle realtor. That's mm -hmm. that's really what what you're doing. Um, and, and that's an amazing way of looking at things. And one of the things you mentioned to me, one of the questions is you talked about uh, asking, what is your tolerance for traffic? Yeah. Why does that play such an important role? So I have relocated so many families. And before I get into that, I, I just wanted to highlight before I became a realtor, I was actually a personal assistant. For a very long time, I was a personal assistant and estate manager. I was a property manager. I was a community association manager. So I have dealt with people in all types of classes and demographics, whatever you can think of. So I had to navigate families, dynamics, um, places, locations, and I used to be an event planner and travel planner. So when you put everything that I have onto one place, I can't, I, it's like I have this want and need and desire growing up in South Florida and like it's this is a service industry in Miami so growing up in South Florida you just really get into the service aspect of what Florida is so you want to make sure you do a good job you want to get people excited to be here you want them to have a great life here so taking everything that I've had in my past I'm able to really navigate different type of people moving here for whatever it is that they have to do you know some people are actually moving here because they get a new job and I'm like, okay, well, where do you want to go? And they're like, well, I'm going to work in downtown. Okay. Well, what's your price budget? And then they're like, okay, they give me a budget. 
and that budget might not fit with downtown. Mm. So automatically it places you outside of downtown and we can find you the right place, but now we have to understand lifestyle. If you're going to be an hour and 40 minutes away from work, is that really conducive for you and your life and your family dynamic? I need to understand that because if it's not, I'm going to work like heck to find you the right place. That's going to put you within a certain time frame to get to and from work so you can still have that lifestyle after or before work and that you're not sitting in traffic for three, four hours a day because it happens. Yeah, It's important to me to understand what your tolerance is for that. That's amazing that, you know, and um, really being a lifestyle realtor, you do, you have to understand so much about family dynamics we were talking offline about is grandma and grandpa gonna live with you where's mom working is mom staying at home is dad staying at home mom's going to work are both working from home i mean there's just so many dynamics how many children do you have um what resources are available there there's so much that goes into it it and does I, I call it the bubble yeah right? In our discovery call, we're going to talk about the bubble, the nucleus, right? So where is the nucleus? Who is the, who's inside the nucleus? Who makes up the nucleus? And how big of a bubble do we need to be in to work, play, and be able to accomplish everything that we want to accomplish? So if I'm, just for an example, um, I'm going to relocate a family, whether mom or dad got a new job, and they're coming for a great new opportunity, and I'm relocating um, children. Let's just, and even children with challenges, I mean, sometimes... Um, my son is autistic. So I, I find it very important that if the family's willing to talk to me about different challenges, it's also very helpful for me to place you. So I'll give you a perfect example. Um, if my child is autistic, so I need to know where these services are mm. and, and, and resources to get them. So I would start there. Okay, well, now we have this one thing we have to think about. Now we have a grandma or granddad that are coming to live with us. So now I think, okay, well, we need space. They're going to need their own little space because they want to feel independent and we want them to feel independent and we want them to be comfortable. So how far are those appointments? Are they going to have transportation for those appointments already included with their insurance or, you know, pay, pay by cash or whatever? Or is mom or dad or aunt or somebody, family member, going to have to transport them there? So if I have to know where you're going to work, what time you have to pick up children from school, possibly, and how far are these appointments to get grandma and granddad or anybody in the family facing a challenge, a health challenge that has to get to the doctors? And where are those doctors that specialize in that going to be? So I always think about the bubble. I think about the nucleus. And I think about, okay, everybody in this home has to be within 15, 20, 30 minutes max traffic, if possible, within this price range to have this lifestyle where we can get them to the appointments, we can get them to the lifestyle, we can get them to the after school practices, we can get them to the fun stuff that we like to do, which is like lifestyle and entertainment. I love going to shows. I love going to the beach. Some people that relocate don't even want to be next to the beach. You know, so if mm -hmm. if I know that you don't care less about the beach, well, okay, well, I'll put you 40 minutes away from the beach and you're still going to get the lifestyle that you want. Yeah. But I need to know the more you talk to me, the more you tell me about life, the more I get you get to know me, you become my friend, you, I become your friend, then I can really help you because I care. Yeah, you know, and and really. All right, I'm not trying to become all psychiatrist psychology, <laughs> but but just listening to you, I feel like, yes, the service industry molded you so much but being a parent myself I feel like our children mold you and it sounds like as somebody you sound like somebody speaking from experience of someone who wished this person would have asked me before they did this right if they just would have asked the right question if they just would have found out we would not be stuck in this situation. We would not be trying to overcome life as an obstacle when really our lifestyle should be supporting us, not be the obstacle we're trying to overcome. Exactly, because that's when everybody's going to thrive in the family. That's yeah. when mom, dad, family, the elderly, you know, like I relocate a lot of elders and even locally and from other places that are, are coming here. And just knowing what what makes you happy? I want to know what makes you happy. 
I want to know what makes you smile, what makes you just feel purposeful. I want to know, I have to, I have to be by water. I don't care if it's a lake. I don't care if it's a river. I don't care if it's a canal. I don't care if it's a beach. I need to be by water. If I'm not by water, I'm just going to be in a funk every day. Mm. And it, this is a real thing. Like I've talked to people that they're like, it's true. Whatever your environment's in, nature wise some people love the mountains some people love the beaches some people love rivers whatever it might be like there's just so much that goes into these things like i want to know everybody like i i i really want to to build relationships that i don't want to just serve one person in your family i want to serve your whole family that's amazing i i do i do and your friends and your and your colleagues and i want you to know that when when my name comes up in a household it's like they smile yeah. you know and they're like man she was great and it's, and it's, I won't even know, but just that vibe that goes into the universe that you're like, man, she was great. I'll, I'll be on the other side of town. I'm like, somebody would just, wow, somebody just gave me some great vibes, some great life, you know, like, let me give it back, you know? That's awesome. I want it. That's amazing. So I'm curious, um, stepping into a, a different subject somewhat, um, now with Brightline opening. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm so super excited. excited. I, oh my God, no, I'm excited. This is, I, have you, have you wrote it yet? So I've written, so let me tell you, I'm born and raised in South Florida. So I've actually written the bright line, okay. but it wasn't the bright line today. Okay. okay? Because the bright line before was kind of like, I'm, we're not going to talk about that, but the bright line today, I, I'm so excited to just tell all my investors like, yeah, Hey, we are going to be buying and selling and renting from Miami to Orlando to Tampa and to to Naples because you know MVP is so big. But as far as Brightline and what it does for us right now is it just gives us that connection from Miami to Orlando and from Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach to Orlando, obviously. And there's so much opportunity, yeah. so much opportunity. So my investors, they are excited. I am excited because it gives me a reason to take my son on the weekends to go play. That's awesome. You know, and then vice versa. Yeah. So I'm curious with your investors right now, what are they looking at? Are you trying to find um, properties closer to Brightline so that it's easier to travel or what what type of things are you looking at? Right now, I'm getting a lot of international buyers that are very, very interested in Orlando. Right. So obviously Miami is this hub and Miami has this greatness about it for so many different enriching um, things. Right. So but they like that the bright line has opened and they're like, well, now we can expand our portfolios. Right. So they everybody's into the Airbnbs. Obviously, they're still looking for flips. They're not really looking for flips to go to Orlando on the bright line, but they do want kind of like where they can bring their families to use these kind of like, you know, properties from time to time where they can send their business partners, you know, over there to also, you know, go do what they got to do and then be able to have these different positions in Florida where they can do business, you know? So like they want to be in Miami, they want to be in Orlando, they want to be in Tampa. So like, I'm just like, okay, well, we're getting there. We're getting okay. there and you're already in Miami, but now you're going to Orlando. And our MVP agents are so great in Orlando that like, I'm just so excited for you. Period. <laughs> you know, like we got you. Yeah. Well, it's it's amazing because if you consider, right, um, the two top investment counties in Florida were Miami-Dade and Osceola, which yeah. is right next to Orlando. Those were the top. So somebody who works with investors, you got it covered. You got it all covered. It's amazing. Let me say, and at first, um, so I have a, a buyer. He's actually from Ecuador, which he's really cool. And he was like, we were looking here and we couldn't have find, we could not find in his price point, something that was affordable in that price point that was going to be great for an investment for him. Mm -hmm. And so I reached out to another MVP agent in Orlando, because, you know, we all, we all have a great network. So I said, you know, I'm not going to be going back and forth to go obviously help the person. You know, yeah. I'm going to be on top of the transaction. I'm going to be negotiating contracts, all that great stuff. And, you know, from time to time, I will jump on that bright line because I want to go hang out, you know, and yeah. I want to go see Orlando. Um, but our partners are so amazing that I was like, okay, well, let me connect you with my MVP person over there. And immediately they were able to find them in their price point, not just one, a hundred different options. Wow. Within their price point. And so now my buyer who buys in Miami, 
is super excited because now they're going to also be buying in Orlando. And they're even more excited about when they come into town to Miami, whether to do business or for pleasure, they're jumping on the bright line and they're just making a reason to go to Orlando with their families and their friends and their network just to go hang out and just have another different piece of lifestyle in Florida. That's it's amazing. fun. It's it's just fun. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I appreciate you taking the time. I have a couple of more questions, just two. The first one I feel is probably the most important question that I've asked you all day. And that is, how do you feel about the Miami Heat? Advancing. I was at game six. Uh huh. And that last second was heartbreaking. But what I'll tell you about um, the Miami Heat people, to me, I, I can tell you the truth, okay? And I'll probably get a lot of like, you know, I don't know, whatever back from this from Miami people. I don't follow basketball mm -hmm. like that. I'm always busy, right? Yeah. And as much as I love it, I don't follow it like that. But I, I, like I said, I'm a people person and I love people. And so people that I love, love basketball. People that I love, love the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. So just by by knowing them, I'm like connected to the Miami Heat, period, you know? Yeah. And so I'll go to the games and I'll support. But really, I'm supporting the people that love it, right? Because yeah. I go to these games because I love to see their faces when they light up and their team is just like, we got this, you know? Yep. And, and then I see the heartbreak when they, when they don't got it. Yeah. You know, so right now, being from Miami and growing up in Miami – the songs that they play at those games, we've been listening to these people from Miami make a way out of Miami through their music. So when they play at the games, that music to me is like, these are people that I grew up with, yeah. you know, that I grew up in the same neighborhoods and the same, you know, whatever. And for them to be able to do things that are so much bigger than them and be affecting people emotionally just by having the song play right now is crazy to me. Right. So when they lost game six, that last second, I just felt all of Miami's heartbreak. Mm. So when they came back, mm -hmm. I was like, me hate them, my people. Mm -hmm. Get the pots in the pans. Let's start celebrating. That's amazing. Because over here, we take out pots and spoons and we're pa, 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 pa. So I'm super excited because I know that people that I love and grew up with right now today, they are on a big win. They're on a high. Like, they're super excited. And I love excited people. That's awesome. So I'm excited. Well, you know, uh, Derek, our our CEO, he was rooting oh, for the Celtics. I know. So, Derek, sorry, buddy. Um, anyway, this is not to rub it in. No, but you know, we're we're sorry, sorry, Miami. You know, the problem is I'm from Detroit, and Detroit oh. Pistons. I grew up with the bad boys of basketball. Detroit will always be in my heart. My um, best friend from Detroit who just bought a house in Orlando and I will be taking the bright lane to go hang out. Oh, if you get over here, you got to let me know. I will. That's amazing. Will. Um, but anyway, last question. Here it is. Everybody knows my shameless plug time. Why did you choose MVP Realty? There are so many brokerages to choose from. You are obviously an amazing person who, quite honestly, would be successful anywhere they go. What? Why? I'm going to get personal. Um, Victor Neighbor. I had just moved to Naples. I was in, so I told you my son is autistic, mm -hmm. and I was born and raised in Miami. But my family has been traveling to Naples every weekend since 25 years ago, 35 years. I don't know. I might as well be a, a city a person for both cities. Okay. I'm Naples and a Miami. And two Miami for Naples and two Naples for Miami. It's weird. Right. So my son being autistic, Miami has great resources for autism. And at the time he was three, but I was having to leave my job three times a week mm -hmm. to be able to go take him to these services speech, occupational behavior, all of those things, because they told me early intervention was going to be what makes him successful later when he starts school. It was it was just zero. I, I couldn't do anything but think about that. And I heard that Naples, Collier County, had an amazing program for three-year-olds that they could actually do all the services in school with wow. the IBI program. So me finding this out as a single parent, I was like, I need to get there. So I literally moved from Miami 
to Naples, which I, I used to work in Naples in the summers when I used to go see grandma. So I'm very familiar with Naples and I went to Naples and I got there and I had already had my license, but I wasn't really selling. I sold family members and friends. Mm. And when the pandemic hit, I lost two jobs back to back. So as a single parent with an autistic child that needs services, it was scary. Mm. And I I said, I need to start doing real estate again. So I called around everybody and I interviewed with everybody, even the top names in the area at the time. And I just didn't feel, I felt like a number mm. maybe. And so when I met with Victor neighbor, um, he cried. I cried. He was um, very vulnerable with me to tell me his story. And I'm, a storyteller and I share stories and I'm not afraid to share stories. And I love people that are not afraid to share stories and that are hard stories. And so Victor had me a hello. Okay. MVP had me a hello, but because before I went, I also did my research on them. And so what got me in the door was really understanding the charity programs that MVP has. And I have a nonprofit called love like me, shameless plug for a local community here. And so knowing how much this brokerage gave back to the people that were invisible, mm -hmm. everybody can give to anybody, okay? Any, any corporation can give to anybody. But for the corporation to give to people that are invisible, that have no voice, that you're leaving the 99 for the one, to me, that was MVP on paper before I got there. So when Victor solidified that in our meeting, I think we met for an hour and a half that day. When he solidified that for me and he told me and he broke it down for me what MVP was doing, not just here, locally, in the state, and in another country. Yeah. I was like, this is where I need to be. Yeah. I didn't know how much else was coming that was just this is where i need to be because this is who's doing something for other people yeah this is somebody that this is people that seem to care about other people but i would have never imagined what i found so i'm gonna need a few more minutes because i'm a storyteller go ahead i, okay. I want to hear the story Break okay it down. so like i said i was um Two jobs lost, going through savings, going through my my credit cards, all that great stuff, just to be able to make sure that my son never lacked his services for his speech, occupational behavior, and that I still kept a roof over our heads, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm a single parent. Right. So being with MVP, the first thing that I got introduced to was Derek's videos. So I just saw this man who apparently loves um uh the Celtics, right? And he just kept saying, watch my videos, watch my videos. It's that easy. Watch my videos. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to watch this man's videos. I don't know why him, but I'll watch his videos. So from 11 o'clock at night till 12 o'clock in the morning, which was the time that at the time I could study uninterrupted, mm -hmm. I was watching the videos. And after a course of time, I started applying what the videos were telling me. And I was like, Okay, maybe he's, let me watch more videos and let me watch more videos and let me watch more videos. And then the, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to get to a point, but then the MVP Advantage program came out and something told me you should do it. And I didn't know why I needed to do it. I just felt like I was desperate. I was, I, I was like a breaking point. I had mustard seed, mustard seed faith. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm just going to do it. And I can honestly say that the the course that I took with MVP Advantage, Mark Ledbetter, is an amazing human, and I will always give credit to Mark Ledbetter for the realtor that I have become. That's amazing. And it and and it's something about Mark is that Mark made you feel seen. Mm. Mark made you feel important. Mark made you feel like you can do this. And Mark knew my story. He knew where I came from. He knew I had no sphere. He knew I had, I had no direction. I had no family. I, I don't feel like I have 
this unit. I don't have a unit. I don't have a bubble. Yeah. I didn't have my bubble. So I guess that's why I'm so, I want to create everybody's bubble, right? Because mm. I didn't have the bubble. And Mark was the first step in my life to start to feel like I had a bubble. Wow. So Mark made me feel seen. And Mark saw something in me I didn't see in me. And Mark taught me things. And I have dyslexia. And I I um, have autism too. And my learning style is very different. So Mark has patience. And Mark has belief in you. And Mark, he he'll make opportunities for you. Mark was my first opportunity in real estate. Mark said to somebody that needed a little bit of help and they said, hey, I've got this girl and she's she's great. She's really great. And she's going to really take care of your customers. I think you said you needed help. I think she can help you, but I think that she's really going to help people. Mm. And I that one person that Mark introduced me to at that time is still, we're still helping families till today closing deals with them and helping them find the lifestyle and the bubbles that they need. And so for me, being a person that felt very alone and very scared and um, not really having a place to look at or something to look forward to or, or work towards, Mark gave me that. The program gave me that. And then I met my best friend. So who would have thought that I, I would I think at the, I don't even know how I'm 40, uh, maybe 37 or whatever it was. I met my best friend, right? And her name is Tiffany Zakowski. Mm. And I met her in the class. And I met my other best friend, Michael Bernardo. They're both MVP agents. And these two people also with their backgrounds and meeting me have been the people that for the last three or four years support me, love me, check up on me. Hey, does Hero need anything? Does my son need anything? Um, when I can't get to something, they pick up and they'll help me, you know, with other customers or they know my perfectionist, you know, like, and they just, they love on you the way that Mark taught the class to love on each other, show each other support, be there for each other and actually create a bubble. Yeah. So here's my bubble. I've got Mark and now I've got a brother and a sister in this little bubble of real estate. And from there, I've just, you know, I went on to the MVP Edge program. And so I did the program. And then I met more people in the bubble. And now Helen Perilla, she's she's like my, I don't know, she's crazy. Like, I love her. Like, she's like, um, she's like the me. She's like the opposite me, but she's got blonde hair, you know? Yeah. Um, and she's become this person that as I grow, she grows. And as she grows, I grow. And so the more people that I have met, just so you know, um, MVP agents, not knowing me or anything about me, but just having the name and knowing the culture of the agents that come from MVP, it's really easy for MVP agents to trust another MVP agent because they know your training, they know your background, they know your leader, they know your leaders. So they know who Mark Ledbetter is, they know who Derek is, they know the professionalism and, and the amount of care that you have to have because that's what our brokers are creating the culture that the brokers have created. You know, like the, you have to follow that culture. If you don't fit in the culture, you're probably going to find somewhere else to go to on yeah. your own. Because in this culture, everybody's in the bubble. Yep. Right. That's our that's our culture. You're right. we're all in the bubble. Okay. So if you're in the bubble, somehow within this bubble, we're going to help each other. We're going to support each other. We're going to figure out the questions, and we're going to get the solutions, and we're going to get the answers. And this is what the bubble is. Right. Yep. And so. Having that now is kind of like, and we just keep growing and we just keep getting more amazing people in the, in the bubble. And it just, MVPs is something I've never experienced. Not, not in a family dynamic, not in a business dynamic, not in, and I was with other brokerages. Yeah. And I have had immense growth as a person and as a, an agent in this industry, because I, when I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I had nothing and Derek's I, I, I mean I can give you a couple examples not not just the culture and the love and the support and all that good stuff but like even just the the technical like I'm not very tech savvy and I'm becoming very tech savvy you know and I'm not but yeah. that's because of the trainings and then 
not only the tech savviness, but like just basically like being able to like do your contracts and like understand your contracts and have the support that when you don't understand something, you're like, okay, I have these non-competing brokers that can get on the phone and just answer my questions. Yeah. So being available to me at, I mean, I've had Derek step out of like beautiful dinners just to get on the phone with me yeah. in the evening. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, but kind of needed you for a minute. So I'm sorry. You know, like, but doesn't it, it, it just always blows my mind though. And I tell people this when we're, you know, talking with them about, should you join MVP? Shouldn't you? It blows my mind. I tell them, you know, give me one other brokerage where the CEO is going to step out of a dinner to talk to you. Give me one other brokerage where your introduction is the vice president getting on a phone call with you. It, it doesn't happen. And I just know from like, like you, my own experience was when I started in real estate, I was, you know, I have all this background with just so much stuff, but I'm trying to figure out how to balance it. And I said, okay, it's, you know, I watch TV. TV makes you smart, right? Anyway, I watch TV. I got to be ruthless. I got to be, so I, I tried it for like two months. And like, I Too just much. felt like a crappy person the entire time. And finally, one day I woke up and I looked at my wife and I said, if that's the type of person I got to be, I don't want to do this business, but I don't believe I have to be that type of person. I believe I can be a good person, a kind person, an understanding person, a supportive person, a empathetic person and do better than everybody who's trying to cut throats i feel like that's that's the that's what i mean like you leave the 99 for the one yeah right and so everybody can follow what's big and glamorous and and the best next best thing but are they seeing you and when you get with people that see you you're like wow like i'm part of something else I can't be part of the other thing because I can't keep up with the Joneses. Yep. And I don't want to. Yep. Well, Lorena, you are killing it. And I love that you're a part of our MVP family. Uh, thank you for taking the time. Anyone who is looking to invest, buy, sell, whatever, as always, Lorena's information is in the description. Reach out to her if you don't. If you if you watch this video, you may hate me. Stop watching me, whatever. I don't care. But I feel like if you watch this interview and you're thinking about buying, selling, investing, and you don't contact Lorena, it, just move on. You just move on because this is the woman you want on your side. And just thank you. I thank you too. I really appreciate you even putting the spotlight on me today. I really appreciate it, but that's what you guys are great for. That's what MVP is for, is to really see where people shine and and just hone in on that, you know, because nobody else is doing that. Like, who else is saying, hey, you guys, Lorena's, Lorena's cool, man. Like, Lorena really cares, and Lorena really is a lifestyle expert. And, you know, how, who else is going to know that Lorena's a lifestyle expert? Well, hopefully a ton of people <laughs> because you deserve it and you take great care of Hero, that amazing boy. When I I didn't know his name was Hero till recently. I was uh we were on Facebook, I, I don't know, doing something, and I saw his name was Hero, and I'm like, that is an amazing name. Okay, all right. Then we really gotta end it, but I have to know why Hero? Where did you get it from? Like I told you, the bubble. Yeah. Um, I've been very, I was always lost and I never felt a place that I really belonged. I was always the black sheep. My family loves me, by the way. My family's great. It's just me not knowing I was autistic, not knowing I was dyslexic, not knowing, you know, having so many different identity crises and not knowing who I was. Um, my son, when he was born, I had three miscarriages and I was told I was never have children um, yeah. for seven years. And my son was a surprise and my son was a rebirth for my life because 
where I was lost and, and just didn't know what my purpose in life was. My son gave me a purpose. My son became my hero. I became a different person when I was blessed with him in my life. Wow. And so just because I'm here, and I, if I am speaking to anybody that has um, any children with challenges, I did start early intervention with my son at 18 months. And it was aggressive early intervention three, four times a week for a good three, four years. I can tell you that they told me that my son wouldn't talk. My son wouldn't be able to really excel in anything. And my son is amazing. And he's a straight A student. And he's in regular classes. Um, he challenges himself. And I, where they told me he couldn't, don't believe people, please don't. Just keep, just, just believe in, believe in yourself, believe in your kids, believe in what can happen and just believe, you know, mustard seed. Yep. A hundred percent. And you're proof of it. Lorena, thank you again. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a pleasure. And again, if you're looking at buying, selling, investing, Lorena is your girl. Yes. Anyway, you all have a great day. Like, subscribe, share, comment goes a long way towards helping us to continue to create videos like this. We hope you all have a great day and we'll see you on the next agent. Thank Stop. you.